Hi everybody, it's Jessica, the Dollhouse Curator, and welcome back to the Curated Dollhouse. So y'all, exactly a year ago, on November 10th, I sat down in front of this bare DIY dresser that I had just started using as my Curated Dollhouse, and I introduced you to me, the Dollhouse Curator, and to my Curated Dollhouse. And here we are a year later. We have started, we started an Instagram account that same day. We also started our YouTube channel and started posting. And on November 11th, which is Veterans Day, and y'all know I am an Army veteran, I went out and I had the absolute best shopping haul day ever. I just enjoyed my Veterans Day out and about and shopping and getting stuff for the dollhouse. And that fun that I had that day is actually the last bit that it took for me to say, okay, I am really going to dive into creating a YouTube channel and talking to people about what I do in my doll space. We have a very unique doll space. So y'all know my doll space is a DIY dresser. See if I can adjust this camera just real quick. So my doll space is a DIY dresser that I started using last year to be my dollhouse. When I first started it, we were using makeshift tables and makeshift items just to create different doll scenes and different doll levels. And I was just enjoying being in my dollhouse. And then in starting the YouTube channel, we started to grow and we started to push ourselves and we started thinking kind of really dynamically outside of the box on how we could make this curated dollhouse just really something amazing for me, for me. So what has changed in this dollhouse over the last year? Number one is that we have now two full floors. So I have the base floor on the bottom. We also was able to do a second floor on the top. That was one of the first upgrades that we made to the curated dollhouse was to um, get that second floor going. We also have constant light in my dollhouse. So actually, let me go back. Lighting was the first actual upgrade that we did. We already had the idea of doing a second floor but it was Christmas time and I had my holiday dollhouse up and I did not want to take that down and put the second floor in at that time. So the first upgrade we made was actual lighting. So my husband went on Amazon and went digging around and searching and found this wonderful lighting system for me. So it's A-I-B-O-O. -O. I don't even try to say it. Abu. I'm probably doing it wrong, but anyway, but it's under cabinet lighting. So we added that everything you can hook in really easy and it's interchangeable. So I have it set up in a more permanent fashion now, but it is interchangeable lighting. So we added permanent lighting. And then the second thing we did after I finished with my holiday dollhouse is that we did upgrade that second floor. So that we could actually get a full top floor and not just different makeshift tables at different levels. So that worked out really good. Let me see if I can get y'all back up where you can see the light. There we go. And then we started kind of growing a little bit more. So we started coming up with ideas because even though I had a second floor, I only had 11 inches on the top to work with. And then on the bottom, I only had 19 inches to work with. So got to adjust you again. So what we did next is we added in a foam board template behind everything and underneath so that I was able to get 21 inches of space coming out on this bottom floor using that foam board that you can see here. And then I still had only the 11 inches up top. So the next thing I did is I started working on ways to upgrade my top floor so I could get more space up there. And we went through the 11 by 14 inch boards. We did 12 by 12 inch boards. And then I found the 16 by 20 canvas. 
So initially I already had a couple that I was using as walls because it's canvas, so it's hollow underneath. So it did, didn't make a good floor. But then something, y'all know me as a dollhouse curator, everything I try to do is different. So I try to think outside of the, I don't even try to think outside of the box. I try to always remember that there is no box. Okay, you can kind of do whatever you want to do if you're willing to put the effort in. So I was willing to put the effort in on getting this to a certain level. So the next thing I did is after I realized that those 16 by 20 canvas would give me an additional four more inches up top for what I wanted to create with space. Then I went in and I figured out how I could keep it from being hollow underneath. So I put the 16 by 20 inch boards up front on the top floor and then I used the 11 by 14 and the 12 by 12 inch boards underneath it in the open space so that when I put the dolls up there in the areas where I have it designed, they'll stay because there's a hard floor underneath. Also with this, and I can't show you this because I am tethered to this phone because my speaker is not good with this phone and I have to use headphones. But underneath here, I do have a space where I can access the 11 by 14 and 12 by 12 inch boards. So if I need to scoot them over a little more this way for support or scoot it this way for support, I can do that. So you see right here, doesn't have anything underneath because you can see I'm like really pressing right there. And then right here does. So that was a fun way to figure out how to get more space at the top. We also upgraded our lighting um, around that same time, I think, and we went to do some recessed lighting. So y'all can see the recessed lighting on the bottom is really good. So I took my lights and then I attached them to some foam board. I just stuck them through the foam board and they're right in the middle space, right in between where my one by twos are to give me the support for the top floor. And that gives me the light on the bottom. And I had a foam board strip at the top set up the same way. And then we did some maneuvering around for one of the dollhouses. So I wound up taking it down. And then this is how I makeshift put it up for this design. Because I like it over here where it gives me a little bit more space at the top and not feel closed in. And for this one, so for my next upgrade on this one, because... That's something else we're going to be doing this year is we're going to be doing some additional upgrade on our dollhouse. So one of the things is we're going to fix our lights. We are going to do a full board or something across the top that has my lights in it. That gives me a little bit of texture and some color on the ceiling. And then I'm going to fix the one down here as well so that it is one good piece. My husband has went through and started looking for other lights also. So we may be adding more lights to this or different lights because one thing I missed in my old setup that I had, I used puck lights. Y'all know how I feel about them puck lights because they have the absolute worst battery rate. But I had color change puck lights in one of my setups and I loved that. And I don't have that in this setup. So my husband has went searching and we think we have found some something that will work in this setup that still keeps us very sleek, very temporary, quick disconnects and reconnects, but that also gives us colored light in the dollhouse. But anyway, so we're gonna be working on our lighting and I'm also going to be working on my second floor. I would like to get a full second floor that I am not still having to adjust stuff with, but this does work y'all. So we have went from 11 inches up top to 16. So that's an additional five inches of diorama space that I was able to get on the top. And then on the bottom, I got an additional, I think three inches from 19 to 22, yeah. Um, with using the foam board, so it works really good. And then, because I don't want this video to be too long, we started out doing different doll scenes or dollhouse spaces or little ideas that actually started with one doll that I was doing an apartment for. So I would decide whatever doll it was going to be. I decide whatever color scheme we would do, and then I would build like a dollhouse 
a doll apartment in our curated doll space. And over the last year, y'all, this doll space and the ideas that we've decided to put in have so evolved. So from where we started with doing doll apartments, we have extended. So we have done a birthday gift doll house that was all about items that I got for my birthday. We attempted a treasure hunt, attempted a treasure hunt idea. Did not pan out right then. It is on the list for next year. But we attempted a treasure hunt dollhouse and it turned into a jazz club. And this last idea that we are, that is up in my curated dollhouse that will be up probably right to the one year point of our channel is my dollhouse chef dollhouse. This one is an idea that my youngest son had. So I absolutely loved it. I thought it was cute. I figured I could make it work and we did get something up that I thought was super adorable. And then I had this idea to do a doll show because I'd done all of this work to create this amazing dollhouse chef, you know, competition for cooking show competition for doll dollhouse. And what was I going to do? Just take 14 pictures and take it down. So I decided to do a real full on competition with three judges and six contestants. And we went week by week with different challenges and ideas and using different crafts in a dollhouse. So we went from just creating a doll apartment in a 60 by 19 inch makeshift space with some additional accent tables and end tables and some lamps for lighting to this amazing two-story 60 by 16 and 60 by 21 inch space that has constant lighting, that has recessed um, what floor sections, I get adjustable floor sections, whatever we would call it. But this is what our dollhouse has turned into. And we actually did a doll show which I thought was amazing. So for this one, we are actually setting up for our finale, which is why this one looks like it does now. And after our finale, we will do a final goodbye to this dollhouse and then we move on to our next idea. So the next idea, I have a couple of them. I still wanna get to that treasure hunt. I do wanna get that one done, y'all. I will not let any idea elude me. I am the dollhouse curator. Wasn't the right time for that one though. But for the next idea, the next big idea, we are going to be doing a very Ken-centric dollhouse. Over the last year, I have beefed up my Ken doll collection. I have beefed up my dollhouse collection overall. I've actually still curated it as well. So I still have less than 100 dolls. I am working on articulating my entire doll, not entire, majority. Some dolls will never get articulated. My um, Cruella DeVille doll is amazing. I will never articulate her. So, um, but we've articulated more dolls. We've included other doll lines in our dollhouse. So now we have Naturalistas, we have Fresh dolls, we have um, Chelsea dolls, which I didn't have before. We have Rainbow High, we have Creatable World dolls, and in one year, y'all, because a year ago, y'all will notice a lot of my videos were based around my one Cleopatra Princess of the Nile Barbie because she was my absolute favorite doll ever. And in the last year and being with you all and pushing myself and curating my collection and finding the things that I love and that work great for me, I have now a full top three of my absolute favorite dolls. Number one, that is my President Barbie from Barbie the Movie. Absolute favorite doll ever. Number one, from pretty much the minute she got into the house. Number two is Cleo. I've had that doll for over 20 years. She, I don't think, will ever fall off the list. She is absolutely amazing. And then number three is that doll right there in the middle, 
That's my Leto doll. He's Fashionista 212. That is my absolute favorite Ken doll ever. Only doll I have ever done a pre-order on because from the moment I saw him, he was perfection. Now, I have articulated him. He actually comes with a prosthetic leg and I still am working on an idea to be able to have him have a made to move body and a made to move prosthetic leg. That is very important to me. And I'm still working on the idea or shall I say, I still am reminding my husband that that is on his to do list for the dollhouse <laughs> to figure out how to articulate that leg for me. But now I have my top three dolls and I use them. We have upgraded this dollhouse from just a dresser and some tables to an actual true doll space. And we have pushed the level of ideas that we were doing. And every day, I swear there's something new that I want to try or that I want to do or that I like, oh, I, can, I think we could do that in our curated dollhouse. So I look forward to spending the next year with y'all. I look forward to seeing how much we grow. I look forward to reading all of your comments. I look forward to your likes and definitely growing. But anyway, y'all, thank y'all for visiting me, Jessica, the dollhouse curator, taking this tour of where we are one year later on the curated dollhouse. And we are super stoked to start our second year on YouTube and super excited to see where we are a year from now and how many more of you have come to join us and see what we got going on here. So for this video, I'm going to sign off. This is Jessica, the Dollhouse Curator. Thank you for visiting the Curated Dollhouse. And we will be back next week with a whole new video and a whole new concept. Bye, y'all.